Hello, hello, great levens. Welcome to Educate. I rather strongly recommend you to watch our previous video on the term one revision when we are revising the atmosphere, the global air circulation, the pressure bells and whatnot. So now from our previous video, we understood that um, wind, it is just the flow of air. Wind just means the air is flowing. So this is just the flow of air. So when air flows, remember always that it flows from a high pressure cell to a low pressure cell. So this is just a rewind so that you understand how monsoon winds works. So now the thing is monsoon winds, they can move uh, or they can flow. We say that uh, air flows, they, it doesn't move. So monsoon winds can flow from either from the land to the sea or they can flow from the sea to the land so during summer monsoon winds flow from the air uh, from, from the sea to the land so during summer they flow from the sea to the land so this is these arrows are just representing that uh, winds or air is flowing into the land from the sea this is this is the oceans right and then now during winter the opposite happens uh, the wind moves from or it flows from the land to the sea from the land to the sea and from the land to the sea so now you just need to understand how does that happen how do winds end up moving from land to sea or from sea to land so now we need to understand that uh, this monsoon wind that moves from the sea to the land it is known as a summer it is known as a summer wet monsoon so it is a summer wet monsoon wind and then the one that moves from the land to the sea it is known as a winter dry monsoon wind so now we just need to understand how do the winds end up um, flowing the way that they do so now we need to understand that uh, when there is difference in the heating and cooling of the land and the adjacent sea that will result in the difference in the change in atmospheric pressure so you now what does this statement mean it just simply means that remember that uh, during hot days there is a low pressure cell because there is warm rising air leaving a low pressure cell on the land and then during cold days um, Yes, during cold days or maybe when there is cold air, there is a high pressure cell that develops. So differences in the heating and cooling of the land and the sea will result in the development of different atmospheric pressure cells. So now let's understand how does the summer wet monsoon form? like the wind from the, 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 the oceans, the seas to the land. So now the thing is, when it is summer in the southern hemisphere, the intertropical convergence zone moves southward. We need to know that uh, during summer, the ITCZ or maybe that zone where the air converges, it moves southward. So now during summer, there are high temperatures. So how do we know that? Remember that during summer, we go to beaches and during summer, we walk around without sheds. So it just means that um, it is hot. There are higher temperatures over the land. So this will cause low pressure cells to develop on the land. So there is an intense heating during summer. So now the thing is a low pressure cell develops on the land during summer why does a low pressure cell develop on the land during summer it is because it is hot there is warm air rising and remember that when there is warm air rising we develop a low pressure cell and then on the adjacent sea or on the oceans or on the seas uh, at that water there are high pressure cells meaning that there is cold air that is sinking at the seas and the oceans so that develops high pressure cells remember that um, when cold air is sinking or it is descending there is a high pressure cell that develops at the what at the um, uh, at that particular area so at the seas the cold air is descending resulting in high pressure cells at the seas so there are high pressure cells at the seas so now warm moist air Warm moist air flows from the Indian Ocean to the interior, producing rainfall during summer on the land. So the warm moist air is actually that summer wet monsoon that we're talking about. So now why does that happen? You can see that here now we've got high pressure cells on the sea. 
and then we have got low pressure cells on the land and remember that the air always moves from high pressure to low pressure that is why the air here it is flowing it is flowing from the indian ocean the warm moist air we say that this air is warm and then it is also moist because remember that warm air can hold much moisture so warm moist air flows from the indian ocean to the land due to this pressure difference remember that all, always air moves from uh, air flows from high pressure to low pressure right that is why in this case the air is flowing from the indian ocean where there is a high pressure cell to the land where there is a low pressure cell so you are done explaining the summer wet monsoon winds so now because of this so moist air you have to just mention that um there will be wet conditions on the land because uh, there will be rainfall remember that when there is warm moist air it reaches condensation and then it forms clouds and eventually there will be wet conditions on the land so during a summer monsoon wind we get a lot of rainfall right we get rainfall during summer it is because of this warm moist air that is moving from the indian ocean into the what into the land this is specifically on africa so that it becomes easy for you to understand so all you have to mention or when you're explaining the summer wet monsoon you explain that the intertropical convergence zone moves southward when it is summer in the southern hemisphere and then during summer there are high temperatures or you can say that there is intense heating or there is more insulation because there's a lot of sun during summer so it makes the land to be hot and if the land is hot then the air in the land will start rising and when warm air is rising remember a low pressure cell develops on the land and then at the seas we say that at the seas they are there is there is cold air that is descending or that is sinking cold heavy air is sinking and then that will cause high pressure cells at the what at the seas that's why we drew here high pressure cells at the seas high pressure high pressure and then now because of this pressure difference we know that air always flows from high pressure cell to low pressure cell that's why the warm moist air from this indian ocean will move or will flow into the land and then when it reaches the land it, it will eventually condense and then it will form wet conditions so if they ask you to explain maybe in a paragraph of eight lines why do we experience rainfall during summer you have to explain the summer wet monsoon wind so now for the winter uh, the winter the, the winter dry monsoon wind this is how you explain it so there is very cold weather on the land remember that during winter there is very cold weather on the land indeed it is cold during winter for example in june you are always wearing your jerseys because it is very cold so now because there is that cold weather or there is cold air there is cold air that is always descending on the land so that cold air that is descending on the land it causes a high pressure cell to develop on the land so now here during winter a high pressure cell develops on the land why does a high pressure cell develop on the land it is because there is cold air that is sinking to the land during winter that's why we experience cold conditions during winter so that there is a high pressure cell that develops due to the cold air sinking during winter and then it happens opposite uh, due, due, uh, on, on the oceans on the oceans there is um, a low pressure cell at the sea so the sea is warm actually there is warm air rising at the seas just the opposite of uh, the summer conditions so there are low pressure cells there are low pressure cells at the seas and then same applies remember that air always flows from a high pressure cell to a low pressure cell that is why in this case the air will flow from the land where there is a high pressure to the sea where there is a low pressure but then the type of air that is flowing there we need to know that due to these pressure differences there is a cold dry wind that is flowing from the interior to the sea or from the land to the sea so the the air that is flowing here from this high pressure cell or from the land it is cold it is cold and then it is dry so during during winter we do not experience rainfall because 
the the air is cold and dry right remember cold dry air cannot form clouds but warm moist air can form clouds and wet conditions so now that will result in cloudless conditions cloudless conditions over the land so there are cloudless conditions over the land during winter because there is cold dry air that is moving to the oceans or to the seas so you just need to know this when it comes to monsoon winds if you don't understand anything write in the comments so now uh, let us look at another type of wind that is known as a um, that is uh, known as a phone wind so the phone winds are hot phone winds they are hot they are dry winds that start from a mountainous area so when you've got a mountain we need to know that a mountain looks like something like this and then a mountain has got two sides it has got um it has got two sides so this is known as a leeward side so this is known as a leeward side i think i have labeled here okay yeah, but then this is known as a leeward side this is known as a windward side so mountainous areas have got two sides a windward side and a leeward side so when you're talking about a phone wind we are talking about the air that is flowing down the leeward side so this air that flows down the leeward side it is known as a what as a phone wind we just need to understand how is it formed but then the phone wind you need to know that it is hot and then it is dry so it starts from a mountainous area it starts from the top of the mountain and then it descends the what the leeward sides of the mountain so it starts at the top of the mountain and then it descends or it moves down the leeward side of the mountains so now how is it formed that is the most important part so warm moist air ascends the windward side of the mountain so here first of all we have got warm moist air we have got warm moist air that ascends or that rises up this windward side so bear in mind that this air is warm and then it is also moist remember that when we have got warm and moist air it is always going to condense and it will form clouds okay so now the thing is as this warm air is ascending it cools at a dry at their particular rate of one degree celsius per hundred meter so as this air is moving up this windward side as this air is flowing up this side as it's flowing up it loses its heat so it, it, its temperature decreases by one degree celsius each hundred meters the temperature decreases by one degree celsius look at this diagram here which i've extracted from a, a, a study guide so you can see that here the temperature at this point it is a uh, 16 degrees celsius after 200 meters it is 15 degrees celsius after 300 meters it is 14.5 degrees celsius so you can see that it is decreasing as it is moving upwards and that rate at which it decreases it is known as a dry adiabatic lapse rate so now because remember that when warm air which has got moisture as it cools it will condense so condensation will take place condensation will take place and when it is condensing it just means that it is forming clouds in a sense so condensation will take place at the top of the mountain so it has decreased this temperature causing it to condense and form water droplets or little water droplets there and then that will cause precipitation so it will cause here uh, the windward side to have precipitation so now the thing is here the cool air condenses at the top of the mountain to form clouds causing rainfall at the head uh, at the leeward uh, this is the windward side not the way headward sorry this is the windward side so now the windward side or this side of this mountain this windward side will experience rainfall in those uh, conditions that's why you can see on this diagram there is green vegetation on the windward side to indicate that there is a lot of rainfall why is there rainfall you explain that as the warm moist air ascends 
the windward side it loses it loses its temperature or it loses its heat causing it to condense at the top of mountain or maybe at a higher altitude it condenses to form clouds and those clouds will bring precipitation such as rainfall so there is rainfall at the windward side and then because rainfall is already um a rain is raining this side on the windward side so now the remaining air will descend at the leeward side so the remaining air will descend at the leeward side and this air that will descend at the leeward side will be dry so the remaining air so since the air at the top of the mountain is cold it will descend the what the leeward side it is because it is cold remember cold air descends warm air rises that is why at the windward side here the warm moist air was rising the mountain because it is warm and it is light warm light air rises always and then now it means that as it rises it will decrease its temperature and then here at the top of the mountain at the top of the mountain here at the top of the mountain the remaining air is now cold because it has decreased its temperature right and it has condensed so the remaining air is cold so it will start to descend it will go down or move down or flow down the leeward side so as it is moving or flowing down the leeward side it increases its temperature because it is approaching the surface of the earth so that is why you see here um in this diagram that i've provided here here the air at this point at the top of the mountain it is 13 degrees celsius at this point at 500 meters it is 14 degrees celsius at 400 meters it is now 15 and then it keeps on increasing the temperature so this air or this wind that is flowing down the leeward side it is known as a fawn wind so this is known as a fawn fawn this is known as a fawn wind so this is how you explain the formation so as it descends it increases in temperature resulting in a warm dry conditions at the leeward side so these warm winds can dry forest and it it increases the chance of fires to spread so because this wind that is descending uh, the leeward side of the mountain this wind that is moving down the leeward side of the mountain it is hot it is becoming hot as it descends right because it is increasing temperature as it descends it was cold at the top but then it is becoming hot as it descends as it flows down the leeward side so air is now warmer on the leeward side and then it causes dry conditions in the leeward side so it makes it easy for forest fires to develop because when it is dry remember there are forest fires but then at the windward side there is rainfall so there are two different conditions on these sides of the mountainous areas so you need to know at the windward side there is rainfall and to explain that you have to mention that warm moist air rises it condenses at higher altitudes because it decreases its temperature right and then when it is on the top when it is on the top it is cold so it will sink it will sink at the leeward side as as it sinks it increases in temperature so it becomes a hot dry wind it does not have any moisture now it is no longer a, a moist wind because the moisture has condensed and it has formed rainfall at the windward side so as it descends on the other side it is hot it is dry causing dry and hot conditions so the wind that is flowing down the leeward side it is known as a fawn wind that's how you explain how it is formed so a fawn wind it causes a, a bigger risk so it becomes easy to spread forest fires when there is a forest and it is dry and someone uh, and someone lights up a matches and then that matches can end up burning everything so because it is a dry forest but then at the windward side remember there are wet conditions you can see by this green in this diagram that this green indicates that there is a vegetation because there is a lot of rainfall there is vegetation and green land but on the other side of the mountainous area on the leeward side particularly there is a, a dry 
they are dry conditions so even the grass there it is dry and it is easy to spread fires on it so i hope that you have got a grasp on the monsoon winds and the fawn winds please stay tuned um we, i'm gonna try to upload practices as you write and good luck as you write your 2024 grade 11 geography final examinations don't forget to stay tuned tell your friends to also stay tuned thank you for watching